What is up, guys? I just got done watching ROH's All Star Extravaganza 6 on my iPhone. Gotta say, was an exciting show. Oh, and it was a curveball I didn't expect to see thrown my way. Well, a couple of them. First off, the All Star the Battle of the Breakout Stars match between Cedric and Bennett was scrapped because ACH couldn't make my guess had flight had travel issues, so Cedric takes the place of ACH in the TV title match. So, Maria decides that after intermission, she's going to reveal something to the fans. Then after that, we get Mark Briscoe against Hanson. Pretty good opener. Where you had Hanson do a suicide dive to the ropes on Mark. He had Mark doing his traditional stuff, the redneck kung fu, the cactus jack elbow. The ending, though, though I was a little shocked as he beat Hanson with a froggy bow. Oh, in onto that nailed Hanson right in the back, and that has got to sting both guys. Gets a win in about eight minutes, forty-five seconds. I mean, good for what it was. I give it two and a half stars. Next was the Decade versus Coleman, consisting of Whitmer and Page versus Coleman and Watanabe versus Evans and Moose versus Ego and, Al and Josh Alexander. This match was frantic. Take from beginning to end. Under scramble rules, no less. He had a lot of high spots. He had Whitmer being the dick that he was, I mean, that he is. Page. I mean, there's one spot where he throws Paige over the top because they want to see beat AJ. He was telling AJ, I mean, BJ to, die, to go for the dive, but BJ just threw him out, which resulted in a shooting star press, which was very creative, if I might point out. It ends after Ego hit a, I don't know, know what their tag move finisher is, on Paige, Evans, Rolls him up in a crucifix. Rolls Alexander up in a crucifix for the win. Good match. But a little too hectic for my pace. Would have been entertaining for a comedy match, but if JR had the spot on the ROH team, he wouldn't be a fan of it. So, two and three quarters. Oh, also there was a segment with Tommaso Ciampa coming out, exp out, out saying that he apologized to everyone. He's been trying to tax Bobby Cruz. They go into what Tommaso's been suffering. My guess is the guy has IED, a depression or intimate explosive, explosive disorder. A form of depression which is triggered through psychotic episodes of violence when one is physically feels he, is being, he or she is being physically provoked. Which is what I think is what happened with Tommaso and why he got suspended. That said, whew. next up, Decade versus Addiction. Good tag match, but they could have used a little more storytelling, less time given. This one went about 10 minutes, which is about two or three, a little too long for this one, well, in my opinion. And it ends with the high low combo oh, done by Daniels and Kazarian on Roddy. They get the win. Roddy adheres to the code of honor, but BJ gets on his case. And Jimmy has to play the keep the peacekeeper. Or so there's some form of deception in the ranks between with a decade. We then go to intermission, I believe. Don't know why. Uh, oh, wait. Forgot one. Next up was AJ Styles versus Adam Cole in a superb match. This is when the pay-per-view started to get off its ass. Ass. You had great counters. You had great psychology with Cole targeting AJ's leg throughout the bulk of the match. You had great, great high-flying. You had great mat wrestling. You had Cole trying to insult the fans. You had AJ nailing spiral taps, a Pele kick. Cole nail, 
slap me on a figure four or both on on the ring post twice. You're around the post twice on AJ. And it ends with a what I can only assume is like a full Nelson suit. Flex into a slant or a power slam of some sort. By AJ off the top to Cole. That gets the win. And at 23 minutes, these guys gave their heart and soul to this match. Four and a half. I'm giving this one four and a half. This one is definitely a match of the year candidate for me for Ring of Honor. Definitely exceeds what I thought from War of the Worlds. I get this one. Well, it's tough for me to rate it. I don't rem remember much of what happened. Hold on. And it was just superb to see this match go through. I am not kidding, folks. So, the ending come. So, after the match, AJ is told to go back in the ring and hear the Code of Honor. He tells Sinclair, what good is that going to do if Cole's going to disrespect me, but he goes back in anyway, gives a handshake. Cole spits on his boot. Then we go to intermission. At the end of intermission, Maria reveals the custom-made Briscoe world title now re-remade as the title of love. As we know, Maria and Ben are going to exchange wedding vows October the 10th, by my best guess. Oh, apparently the move AJ beat Cole with was known as the Top Row Bloody Sunday. That's got to be the dumbest name for a, finish, for a move I've heard. But whatever. That's it. Then Ben says they're going to do the dirty deed on the belt. That gets Mark Briscoe out. He's and the Ben and Maria are lucky that Jay's busy with the title tonight. Next up, ROH T V title match, Cedric Alexander versus Jay Lethal, Lethal. This was a great match. Not as good as what I was hoping for the ACH Lethal match to be, but pretty good. But there were quite a few times Cedric got too caught up in the excitement that they didn't go for covers. There's and there was one instance where he took a nasty bump when he was going for a top row jump. Martini clipped, pulled his legs out from underneath them, and his and the back. And his upper back and head hit the edge of the ring apron, and that has got to hurt. Near the end of the match, Silesia comes back. And 
and um oh yeah. She tries to get involved, only get drop kicked by Cedric, and then in a shocker, Lethal hits Alexander with the climax, Matt Haven's finisher, and then the lethal injection to get the win. In about 13 minutes, Delirious, when are you going to keep Martini out of a TV title match? Or at least ban him from having guys go after that belt for a full year? I'm getting sick of these tainted finishes involving Martini and the TV belt. Either way, three and a half star match. Colt over the Styles. I decided on four and three quarter stars. I decided on, on to hell with it. I'm giving it the full five. This this one the full five stars. Then we go to the Ring of Honor World Title match. Michael Elgin defending against Jake Briscoe. This match was good, but it came off a little slow. Oh, at the start. You had some moments where Elgin and Briscoe would just beat each other down, but trying to slug each other. One moment where Elgin had Briscoe trapped in the sharpshooter, but he wasn't sitting down all the way. But what, was real co but what really shocked us was the ending. Okay. Elgin and Briscoe are on the eight, and where the timekeeper's table is. Jay nails Elgin with the J driller off the apron, through the table, Throws him back in, goes for another one, only for Elgin to count. It goes for a few running boots and lariats. Elgin encounters with a back fist, then the buckle bomb, goes for the Elgin bomb. Jay turns it around and nails the J, hits Elgin with the J driller in 21 minutes to get the pin and become only the second man to have held the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight title twice. A shocker! For shock value alone, this match also gets five stars, but for what was... for what they did in the match, I can't give this anything more than four and a quarter. I'm not giving this one any more for, than four and a half stars. Half five. I mean, it took a while just for Jay to realize he won the title. Well, for the second time. But either way, Jay Briscoe is now back where he belongs on top of the mountain. As the 21st ROH World Heavyweight Champion. I didn't see this coming. I mean, Elgin barely held the belt for three months. I mean, his reign was about as short as Jerry Lynn's reign. It was a little less than 70 days. So now Jay, Jay Briscoe goes into his cumulative 90th day as the Ring of Honor World Champion. Our family gown Sandy Fork is going to be, be cheering tonight. So, Briscoe wins, Elgin rips the title out of his hand, then puts the belt on his waist, coat of honor here, four and a half stars, just for the shock, for the shock value, because I didn't see that coming. Finally, main event, tag title match, two out of three falls, Red Dragon defeat the Young Bucks in a match that was full of, of, of foul play. You had hockey sticks, a tape. Well, you had sneak attacks from partners. Super kicks. I mean, the first fall went to Red Dragon when O'Reilly bashed, I think it was Matt Jackson with a hockey stick, and they hit Chasing the Dragon on him. Young Bucks get the second fall when they nail a package pile driver super kick combo, a la Kev with Olaf to Kevin Steen in mind, to even it up. The third fall, eerily similar to how the War of the Worlds match ended up. Ended. Bucks go for more bang for your buck. Nick gets thrown off the top through a table, through the spare table by Fish. O'Reilly traps Nat, Matt Jackson in a triangle choke. Oh, and a turn had been taken out by this point. The original referee Paul Turner had been taken out by this point, so Todd Sinclair slides in. In roll through by O'Reilly. 
goes to the cross arm breaker, traps the leg like he did at War of the Worlds in May. Mac quickly taps out, and the winners and still tag team champs, Red Dragon, in about 30 minutes. My, in my guess, about 30 minutes. Don't know what the official time is, but either way, this match, while not as good, it wasn't as good as the War of the Worlds match, it's still a damn good it was still a damn good match. So I'm gonna give this one four stars. And four stars. Stars in the night. But then Champa comes out, attacks the young butts. That's with Project Champa. But a mat to Nick Jackson. And then it's a neck breaker off the corner through the exposed flooring of the ring on the Nick Jackson. On the Matt Jackson. I don't remember which Jackson got which. And the show ends on that. Tommaso, that's strike two on you, buddy. One more, and it's bye-bye. From ROH. This pay-per-view as a whole, this I show as a whole, I'm going to give this one eight and three quarters out of ten. This eye pay per view on a whole, I'll give it eight and eight point seven five out of ten. It was that good. I'm out. Peace, and hopefully, I'll be seeing you for Ring of Honor's next eye pay per view if they opt it. Final battle, 2014, on December the seventh.